Today on acupuncturemasterclass.com, we're talking about risk of pneumothorax in acupuncture, how you can avoid it, and which acupuncture point is most commonly associated with it. Let's take a look. So welcome back to acupuncturemasterclass.com where we help students and new grads become better acupuncturists. Today's big topic, pneumothorax. This is something that a lot of students are concerned about. Uh, pneumothorax isn't very common in clinical practice, but it is something that uh, if you follow the right advice, uh, some of the things that we talk about in this video, it'll never be a reality in your clinical practice. So that's what I want for everyone, just to needle safely. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, gallbladder 21. This is the point that is commonly associated with the uh, pneumothorax right on top of the trapezius there. We're going to talk a little bit about location of that point, some of the common actions, uh, and then needling technique. So let's take a look at the close-up. So before we uh, jump into uh, gallbladder 21 and uh, how to needle it, I just want to go through angles, angles of, uh, uh, of needling. You have a few choices when it comes to which angles you choose to do. So of course, the most common, uh, perpendicular. So just when you're coming up to your point, placing your tube down in a perpendicular fashion. Again, this is perpendicular to the skin surface. So we'll come to uh, another video with that uh, shortly. But uh, when you're needling perpendicular, just tapping in perpendicular just like so, and needling goes straight in just like so. Yeah, there's your perpendicular needling. The next option for you, oblique needling. Now this is the needling that generally we would use to avoid uh, any important organs. So when you're needling above the lungs, needling above things that you want to avoid uh, hitting because you needle too deeply, this is the angle that you're looking for. So perpendicular, oblique, basically a 45 degree. Good strong tap when you tap in uh, at an oblique angle and then insertion just like that. So you can just see the 45 degree nature uh, of that particular needle there. And lastly, subcutaneous. So the subcutaneous needling is just, uh, as its name implies, we're looking to be almost level with the skin surface. Now tapping in on an angle enough to go subcutaneous is difficult. You really have to make sure your, your tube is really connected with the skin quite well. So it's a strong tube connection with the skin and a very strong tap in to get that needle into a subcutaneous angle. And then with insertion here, that is more of our subcutaneous look for, uh, for needling. Now, of course, there's variations uh, in between those three different types of needling, but it is the oblique angle that you're looking for to avoid hitting the lungs. So before we uh, talk about needling options for gallbladder 21, just want to quickly go through some location. So to find gallbladder 21, you're going to need a couple of anatomical landmarks, one being C7 or the midline, basically looking for the midline of the body, but generally at the level of C7. You're going to take that distance all the way out to the lateral tip of the acromion. That distance, you're going to split right in half. So you take that distance from the midline, lateral tip of the acromion, split it in half, and then come to the very height of the shoulder. In this view from, uh, from the camera here, you can see you're just getting down to eye level. You're gonna find that very, very top bit of the shoulder, uh, and that is going to be your gallbladder 21, so located right in this area here. Now, when you're looking at uh, needling gallbladder 21, because it's such uh, you know, a, a popular point. Um, it's used for, of course, uh, muscular pain, uh, locating, you know, uh, traversing up to the uh, base of the occiput here. Certainly any kind of trapezius related pain uh, that people are experiencing, very common for pain management. Uh, also very good for uh, inducing labor and uh, encouraging a milk uh, reflex. So when somebody's trying to encourage lactation, you might use gallbladder 21. Uh, but also why it's contraindicated in pregnancy. So you want to be watching out for pregnancy when using gallbladder 21. But I would say the most common reason why this point is uh, involved with pneumothorax is because of its use with musculoskeletal pain. So options when it comes to needling gallbladder uh, 21, we're looking at uh, 
angulation is the most important. So what you don't want to be doing, obviously, this is perpendicular. You can see the needle there. You don't want to be going perpendicular in this point. Below, of course, is the lung, especially on thin subjects. So make sure that you are not going perpendicular in this point. And if you are going perpendicular, let's say if you're doing trigger point therapy, searching for that knot uh, to release, you have to be very careful about how deep you're going, how uh, thin your subject is, being very mindful of those things. This is the reason why this point is so common with pneumothorax. People get too aggressive. They forget uh, that the lung is uh, underneath this particular tissue. So being very careful there. So my suggestion is to change your angle to an angle Angle laterally. You're going to be needling laterally towards the shoulder. Now, generally, you can still you can still kind of grab that trapezius muscle just like this, and you can needle right in there. You can still do your trigger point therapy. It's no problem. This angulation very safe, very easy to do uh, on individuals, and still getting a very good effect. But very safe to do, especially if you grab that trapezius muscle. You're going to easily. Uh, avoid hitting the lung because you're only going to be hitting muscle in that case. The second option is to actually, I'm going to move my, my model here just briefly. The second option is to go obliquely posteriorly. So in that case, you might needle this way. Now this could be uh, achieved in a face up position when you want to uh, achieve gallbladder 21. So that's an option for you as well, but needling obliquely again, but this time posteriorly. And again, this maybe this will be a better angle for you. If you're going to be needling gallbladder 21, this is not what you want to be doing. That is a perpendicular, if you can't really tell from there. So making sure your needle is not perpendicular for gallbladder 21. So I just wanted to talk again about uh, the concept of needling perpendicular to the skin surface. This particular uh, point that we've done, we've got two needles in the same point, large intestine 15. One is perpendicular, one is oblique. Guess which one? So, most common mistake is that when people are needling, they assume perpendicular means perpendicular to the floor, essentially. So perpendicular to the floor is what most people think perpendicular means. However, it's perpendicular to skin surface. So the perpendicular needling in, out of these two needles is this one here. So this is your perpendicular needling. This is more of your oblique, uh, almost uh, sub-Q needling. And of course, this needling would be done for large intestine 15 if you had the person's arm uh, um, adducted. And of course, abduction, you could go more into a perpendicular situation. But this is the difference. This is sub-Q oblique, I would say. This one here is your perpendicular needling, so you have to be mindful of being related to the skin surface when you're needling. Thanks again for joining me today on the video. I hope you learned something. Certainly subscribe to uh, the button below so you can get more videos into your inbox and uh, make any comments uh, underneath. I'd love to hear from you. I'm certainly interested in making more videos and any topics that you like, I'd be happy to make a video on. So I hope to see you all soon. Thanks again for joining.